welcome back to the channel. In this episode of our challenge to track down the cars from the Wheeler dealers, we are looking for the fourth and fifth cars from the sixth series. These were a 1960 Volkswagen Beetle and a 1989 Jaguar XJS. So the first car is a 1960 Volkswagen Beetle and this program first went out on the 26th of May 2009. Now Mike bought this car through an eBay auction. I think he'd earlier made a bit of a, a cheeky approach to the seller to try and buy it at a cheaper rate, but failed. But eventually paid £1,600 for it. Now, the uh, main sort of jobs on it, uh, one was the recon engine that they needed to fit. Uh, and the other one was obviously this full respray. It was a sort of fairly dark blue when they got it. And they discovered behind the paintwork there was actually the original um, Volkswagen Golf Blue and they had it repainted in that colour after Ed had done all the prep work. In addition, uh, the brakes were actually seized so Ed discovered they were um, in need of adjustment so he sorted that one out. He welded in a new front panel which had been supplied with the car and finally they did some sort of trim work and worked out uh, having to put on some new bright work and lights and so on. So how did the numbers work out on this one? Well, as I already mentioned, Mike paid £1,600 for the car. The bills on it were quite eye-watering. It was £3,209. A big chunk of that, of course, was the paint job. So that gave them a total of £4,809. Now, when they came to sell it, they actually got £6,600 for it. So that left them a reasonably healthy profit of £1,791. So let's fast forward to 2024 and see how the, the value on that has changed over the last 15 years. And I'm using my usual baseline, which is Practical Classics Magazine Condition 1 for that vehicle. And their recommendation now is that car should be worth 9750 So that would give them an increase in value of 3150 So it has gone up a little bit, but not as much as we've seen with some of the other cars recently. So what happened to 5407 AD after the program? Well, if we hop across onto my car check, we can have a look and see what we can find out. And initially it all looks good. There's sort of basically ticks against everything. No nasties. Uh, MOT, it'll be, now be MOT exempt. And on the tax side, it'll be under historic tax. So that's all easily covered. So no, no dramas there. If we have a look at the ownership history, the last change of recorded ownership for that one was 2011. So it's been in the same hands for quite some while. And the previous change of ownership before that wasn't too long before. That was January 2010. So it's been fairly stable in that department. But if we go over to DVLA, we can have a look at the MOT history. And that will give us a little bit of a feel of what's been going on with that car. Now, the first MOT I've got for that one is April 09. Now, I originally said the program went out in May 09, so this probably ties in as being the one that the program uh, put the, the vehicle through. Now, this was done at 14,700 miles, and there were no advisories, so I had a clean bill of health, went through fine. The next MOT was only nine months later in January 10, and as you can see, we've got quite a failure list here. I'll just pick out a couple of... Uh, points that have sort of caught my eye first one is body insecure and dangerous that's quite unusual and the one that they actually label dangerous is uh, the brake imbalance and bear in mind this was only uh, 150 miles after the previous MOT so it obviously hadn't done a lot of work it then after all these um, failures had been addressed it then passed uh, but interestingly just a week or so later it was sold on, so that was the point at which it changed hands. It stays sort of quiet again for it for a year, and then January 11, it gets put in for an MOT. As you can see, there's quite a failure list. They'll so pick out a couple of, uh, I was going to call them highlights, that's probably not the right word. Uh, it's in, it says that the fuel tank and pipe is leaking, which is obviously not great. Uh, the front body has excessive displacement and could result in a loss of vehicle control. Now, I'm not sure, exactly sure what that means, so if you can help us out in the comments, that would be, be great, but it doesn't sound good, does it? 
and interestingly this is only about 800 miles after the previous MOT so it still hasn't done a lot of work. Now oddly enough that was on the 18th of January 11. On the 31st of January it goes in for another MOT and it fails again. Uh, there's a couple of um, bits that seem to have reared its head and particularly the one is the suspension um, mounting points have insufficient repair. So someone was going to have to have another go at that. But a couple of days later, the 2nd of February, it did pass and it had no advisories. So that must mean that all the work that was done there had you know, addressed all the issues on that car. So it now gets a pretty clean bill of health. Th oh, so two, three months later, it appears for sale on the Volkswagen site. And it was listed by someone called Brasso. They had it up for sale for 6950 so that's not far away from the price that Wheeler dealers claim they sold it for. And, and the point of that, it had um, a, a new roof lining. He's fit with an age-appropriate um, roof rack to it. And interestingly, it said it had, it had had sort of money spent on the fuel system and brakes, which does relate to the MOT failures um, just prior to that. So the car sort of up for sale and of course we've got that change of ownership in July 2011 so that ties into that a sale of that car went through not long after that uh, for sale post went up so it's changed hands and as I can work out is in still in the same hands of the people that uh, purchased it at that point so it doesn't have another MOT until uh, February 13 sorry I'm telling a lot. It did have an MOT in 2012, passed without any drama, so it's obviously being looked after. 2013, it did have another failure. Again, at this point, it's only done about 2,000 miles since the Wheeler Dealer program, and it had the uh, front subframe excessively corroded. And also, the other highlight I picked out with this was major engine oil leak. Now, if we go back to the program, didn't have a refurbished engine fitted, so that does seem slightly odd. But hey ho, that's I can only report what I what I find, and that all gets fixed and it gets a subsequent pass. Now, 2014 on, the failure issues on this car seem to have settled down, and apart from a couple of missing years, it goes through every year with you know basically with just a few advisories. Uh, the uh, the interesting thing was the engine oil leak disappeared in 2015 from the advisory. So I assume whatever the issue was there has been resolved. Um, but as of recent, it's had, you know, a fairly good clean bill of health. And now it's only done about 19,000 miles. So that's just around about sort of 4,000 since the program. So it still really hasn't done a lot. But it looks like it's still out there and still being enjoyed, which is, is great to hear. So that car was definitely given a new lease of life. So on to our second car, which is a 1989 Jaguar XJS 3.6. And this program first went out on the 2nd of June 2009. Now, as has become common in previous series, one of the cars was generally a much cheaper option. Even though they had a budget of £5,000, this car they bought as a trade-in from a dealer for just £1,000. And I think it was to show that you, you, know, you could turn cars around for, for a much cheaper price than their upper limit budget this car came with a few issues uh, it needed a replacement bonnet because the one on it was pretty rotten there were a number of issues with the auto box uh, so Ed basically gave it a great service it had a replacement head lining which we know is quite often a common problem with Jaguars uh, the, the veneer on the centre console that had, uh, had water damage and lifted away so Ed replaced that and finally, there were a few trim bits that uh, at the end of Scotland and so on that needed refurbishment and repair. So how did the numbers work out on this little Jaguar? Well, as I already mentioned, the purchase price was £1,000. The parts cost was 1691 So after they sold it for £2,450, they were left with a profit of just £759. Now, if we whiz forward to 2024 we can see how the value of this one's changed again practical classics valuation guide and they now reckon that car is worth 5250 so not a major uplift that's a change of 2800 pound 
the the XJS seems to really never come out of the shadow of the E-Type and really had that major following. It's more loved than what it was back in 89, but it's still not a majorly sought after classic. So what happened to G535 VGV after the show? Well, let's start with my car check. And on the front page, it's not a great start. Uh, it's not shown scrapped or written off, but there's no MOT and it's declared as sawn, which is statutory off-road notice, which is something you have to do in the UK if your vehicle's not on the road and taxed. If we hop over to DVLA, that confirms the same, that the MOT expired in November 13, so that's over 10 years ago, and the last V5 for that one was issued in July 13. If we get more of a feel, let's have a look at the MOT history. It was MOT'd in 08, 09, it was not too bad, skipped a couple of years, came back in 12, so not looking bad, and of course that MOT then expired in November 13. What we can find out is when that car was submitted for its last MOT attempt, there's quite a number of issues there, the main ones being corrosion and the performance of the brakes. And if we're realistic, back in 2013, that car still wasn't worth a major amount of money. I know we the dealers had tidied it up, but it really wasn't a, a sought after classic at that point. So I would imagine that that car has been scrapped, broken for spares of some form. It may possibly be about, but my opinion is I'm afraid that one has gone. Well, I really hope you uh, enjoyed those two cars. One had a happier ending than the other, but isn't that often the case with our search for these cars? And if you have enjoyed this, please consider giving that subscribe button if you a click if you haven't already. And in the meantime, have a quick look at this video, which we think you're going to enjoy.